Hey guys, it's Brad Williams with Liquor Barn again. Today we've got a special treat. I know we've been in and around the state uh, over the last few months doing some different cool things, but today I am with the co-founder of New Rift Distilling right here in the distillery, Jay Arisman. He is someone that has been in the industry for a long time. Uh, he's always had my respect. He probably was the most knowledgeable person on malt whiskey, scotch whiskey, and even bourbon back in the day through Cincinnati or even Kentucky. It's his true love, I believe, secretly. He'd probably make a malt whiskey all the time if he could. Uh, but he was fortunate enough to found, uh, be one of the co-founders here at New Rift Distilling, which is putting out amazing bourbons. Uh, we've been coming here for a few years. It all blends together. Could be two years, maybe three, that we've been putting out single barrels. Maybe a couple, Jay, yeah. you think, yeah. since it came out? So they've got several products on the market. Uh, they're doing everything the right way. They're doing bottle and bond. They're doing non-chill filter. Uh, they're doing the classic methods, uh, but their name, New Riff, uh, is sort of just like it says. It's a new riff on an old song, I suppose, or an old chord. Jay, tell me about the, the twinkle in your eye when you were founding the distillery here. What was, what was going through your head when you guys said, I think we can do this. I think I've got an idea. Uh, and where were your, were you really, did you have this kind of pure thought laid out like it has to be these things? Right, thanks, thanks Brad, thanks for asking and, and thanks again for coming. We're always glad to have you guys back. Um, well, there was, there was not really any particular eureka moment. Um, I can tell you the first time the, the topic came up between uh, myself and Ken Lewis and uh, I had gotten back from a, uh, from a, a distilling conference and uh, I had met all these craft distillers and, and I think it was 2008 and uh, I, I was debriefing Ken and the, and the store manager John Stiles on it and saying, gosh, this, these craft distillers, man, they're all over the place. They're making all these crazy things that we got to do more work with these dudes. And Ken at the time, he smoked a pipe like this. And he's sitting at his desk smoking this pipe and taking this in and he would gesture sometimes like a pipe smoker does, you know. The sales reps were in fear of this pipe because he'd said, I don't need that, you know, something like this. And he's gesturing and he says, and he says, maybe we should build one of these distilleries. And what went through my head, it sounds like a, like a joke, but it really happened. I thought, that sounds like a pipe dream. And look at us now, here we are, yeah, but um, who knew that the dream would really come uh, true, but to the aspects of, of our quality and stuff, you know, we were inspired by the tradition. As you alluded to, the, the, the saying is here, we're a new riff on an old tradition. And in all those years at retail, we got to know what that tradition looks like. We got to know who the great small distilleries of the world were. What, the, what does that look like? And how do you get there? And so precepts like no chill filtration and making the juice yourself, and as you say, doing it right, uh, those all fed into what would become New Riff uh, standard of quality. Other things came uh, down the road. Uh, bottled and bond, for example. Uh, all of our whiskey is bottled and bond, except the single barrels, which are barrel proof. Everything. Uh, when we have a, a, a coming release of a special release of, of something rare, that's bottled in pond. It's all we do. And we didn't set out to make that. We set out just to make bourbon. We'll figure out down the road how to sell it. And we realized if we really mean it, the heart on our sleeve, that, that, bottled, that quality is number one at New Riff. How can we not bottle everything as bottled in bond? Because to us, that's not just a category or a, a, a shelf set. It's, a, uh, it's the, the world's highest quality standard for brown spirits in the world. Higher than the quality standards in Scotland, higher than the standards in cognac. And so everything we do is bottled and bond. And it took several years to get to that understanding. I love it, I love it. You guys have checked all the boxes. So if you come to New Riff, which I advise for anybody that comes to Northern Kentucky, it's a great spot, Jungle Gyms, Finley Market. There's, there's a ton of stuff, the reds going on up here. This is a can't miss spot to come to. Uh, having said that, it's a, very, uh, it's, it's a very modern facility. You guys have done a lot of work here and I've been coming here for maybe three years right before you launched the bourbon. Uh, to, so to see it grow in this space right here is awesome. Uh, you guys are doing some kind of unique things. And so tell me, uh, before we get into these delicious single barrels, what, what is the kind of differentiator 
for new rift single barrel, particularly here at the distillery with your methods? Uh, thanks to uh, Elmer T. Lee for inventing the late great Elmer T. Lee, lovely man. Uh, for inventing single barrel, at least in the bourbon industry, because it sure has uh, taken the world by storm with Blanton's in, in 1985, I believe. So how can we not make single barrel and the expression of it and how you do it uh, a big part of our program? And so we do, and it's really connected us to a lot of very passionate people in the bourbon industry, passionate consumers, passionate stores like yourself, bartenders. Uh, so what makes our single barrel st stuff sort of special though is really, uh, again, something we didn't set out to do, and it wound up having a, a major role in how we process these things. So downstairs from this, three floors down, is our barreling room, and it has two gauge tanks. These tanks are, they're 750 gallons. They're only large enough to hold the output of one fermentation. So w how we run is we distill a fermenter, and that goes in the tank, and it goes in the barrel. The next fermenter, that gets distilled, that goes in the tank, it gets barreled. So more or less, it's not a hard cutoff between distillations, but more or less, each fermenter is distilled and barreled discreetly from any other fermenter full of, of beer. And that means we capture in single barrels, not just the flavor of this barrel versus this one, but of this fermenter versus this one. And what we see is each lot or, or batch of whiskey has differences. This one might be sweet, this one might be drier, this one's really spicy, this one is drier and oaky. Um, we get the, the character of, of the lot and that's different than how most distilleries run where they, f they distill off a fermenter and it goes in the tank. They distill another fermenter and that goes in the tank. They distill 15 more fermenters, and each, by the way, each of these uh, fermenters is as big as your house. They distill all this stuff, and then they barrel it. That's an extremely smart way to run, because you gain a lot of consistency by ameliorating the differences from fermenter to fermenter and putting them into, uh, into the, the barrel. But that's not how we run. For better or for worse, each lot is barreled individually. And so in, in New Rift single barrels, you can get a tremendous breadth of flavor from one to the next. At Liquor Barn, we get around the state a lot for a lot of years doing a lot of barrel picks and I always love doing them here or, or even uh, uh, distanced now these days with a lot of the restrictions in place. And, and Molly and Creole and the crew have always taken awesome care of us. And Jay, you and your team uh, write these magnificent descriptions of the barrels. So what happens is you come in, they give you a piece of paper, you have all these descriptions and you kind of circle five or six that are piquing your interest. So I'll just give you a, just a little taste here. Uh, this, is our, this is currently in our store, barrel 17. Polished oak, cherry skins and black pepper, brown butter, toffee and citrus, washed dry by more peppery rye driven spice. That is a great description and I can tell you that um, I love all the distilleries in the state. A lot of the programs are great. This is the only one where you come in and somebody has already given you very great uh, hints at what these will be. Now, when you do it, they don't tell you which one it is. You pick them, they don't, so you're not going, I want the one that says polished oak. Uh, you, you've got to kind of find your way there on your own. So I, I love it that you do that. And, and I found your particular descriptions to be completely awesome and mind blowing. I think there was one one day that said forest floor. And we were all like, what is forest floor? And so when we got done, we had actually picked the one that said forest floor and Cariola said, well, that's number four. And we read it and we were like, I get it. I get it now that after I read it. So th they influence you to pick a selection of barrels, but they don't really pre-influence us on the actual samples. So I think what we're gonna go through here today is both of these barrels are our newest selections in our store from New Riff. We have barrel 17 and barrel 18. Uh, barrel, I already read you the 17 description. Barrel 18 says, nose of hot cinnamon followed by butterscotch. Quite spicy on the palate, almost prickly. Cocoa shows through on the finish. So these are great descriptions. So I'm gonna turn it back to you. We can uh, take our masks off for a second and start tasting these. So let's try these babies. Let's try number 17. That's why we're here actually secretly is just to, to get to drink uh, bourbon in the middle of the day. Nice, good depth. Oh yeah. So it's immediately very viscous, mm -hmm. very rich. Mm -hmm. Viscous, yeah. I'm, I'm very pleased with the mouthfeel of our whiskeys. If you go out to the, the roof deck right behind us, 
Brad and look down in the parking lot, you'll see a square of concrete. It's the most unromantic part of New Riff. It's also maybe the most important. That is the top of our well. We are uh, drilling into a private aquifer that provides um, provides cooling water for the distillery, and so it, it is a green energy savings, but it also provides the water that becomes this whiskey. It's a, a natural limestone aquifer water, and uh, is uh, the, the water itself is big and broad, and you take a glass of this water and you really chew on it, and I'm sure that that's the beginning of the, of the, of the viscous mouthfeel, the, the creamy palate that we attain at New Riff, coupled with the fact that we don't chill filter it. Which leads me to mention how I like to drink the stuff. Now, I was an old retailer like you for many years. Right. And for, for 20 years, I told people, drink your whiskey any way you want, just buy it from me. <laughs> so you want to- Our Maker's Mark tastes better than everyone else's. You want to put Coke in it, knock yourself out. But how I like to drink uh, a glass, especially of an unchill filtered whiskey and a barrel proof one like New Riff here, is to add a little splash of water. And if you hold this up to the light and tipple a little bit of water in there, you see these beautiful oils swimming around in the glass now. That is smoothness you can see. Those are oils that we didn't filter out and are partly responsible for that creamy, viscous mouthfeel. And now additional flavors come out. In fact, when we write our tasting notes, uh, we, we taste them and consider it straight, but we also always add this dollop of water to release everything that can be in the whiskey. That's awesome. This is a good one. No, so the water, it cuts it a little bit, but it does release some different flavors and nuances that weren't quite there before. I do note though that if you do like to drink barrel-proof whiskey straight up, uh, new riffs are, are still quite drinkable. We go in the barrel at 110, and in the aging process, the proof can fluctuate sometimes down to as low as about 105 or so, but typically higher than that. And on the other end, it, it goes up sometimes to maybe 114. What you don't see in New Riff, because of our very low barreling proof of 110, you don't get 137 and a half whiskey. You don't get 129.2 barrel proof bourbon, which it's all well and good, but it's kind of obstreperous to drink all by itself. Yes. New Riff is very tractable. I agree, and it's, it's really more uh, spice flavor, less heat. Uh, at, you know, what you're getting is, is, is spice or rice spice instead of that, is it alcohol? You're not, at 137, you're really not sure what's going on sometimes. But this one was good. All right, so barrel 18. Let's, we'll read them again. I don't know. I'm not sure if you wrote these or not. I, I, I usually try to make sure I get at least one or two rivers in there, but then I was joking with them earlier that sometimes I try to move them out because I get influenced by how, uh, how detailed uh, the descriptions are. Nose of hot cinnamon followed by butterscotch. Quite spicy on the palate, almost prickly. Cocoa shows through on the finish. So let's see how that turned out. Yeah, I can I can agree with the butterscotch. Yes, a very kind of uh, sometimes I call it dessert factor. Mm -hmm. And yet the other one, not so much of that. Right. Again, that's down partly to the barrel, but more important is the influence of that fermenter and just how it fermented on those days versus this fermenter and just how it fermented on on those days. We see the difference in our tasting panel when we taste all the barrels of that lot and all the barrels of this lot and all the barrels of the next lot. And they have a, a character integral to, to each lot of whiskey. Wow, so I really like this one. I haven't added any water to it yet, but it's very rich. And it has that butterscotch kind of toffee caramel thing. And then it goes into the spice and then just sort of unfurls. It's got a very nice finish. Mm. I'll to stop off and get one of these. Add a little bit of water. Well, you guys sure can pick them. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. However, your barrel selections have taken off like wildfire. Uh, and there's a lot of cool names out there and different stickers and different groups and people seem clamoring for this. How are you, uh, how are you keeping up with that? I know uh, four years ago you didn't, you weren't able to just write down the amount of barrels you were going to need. And I know um, that people are, are really after these. So how have you, 
Are you pre-planning more? Are you at full production or, or have you started allocating these now? Uh, they're allocated in the sense that there's now quite a long line uh, to get to them. Uh, and uh, there are uh, parts of our distribution network where we sell more and places where we sell less. Um, and obviously not every, every time can it be a, a private barrel, a selection by the customer. Uh, but we're keeping up. Uh, our staff works their, their butts off at our warehouse campus to keep all that running smoothly. We try and, and, and maintain a certain standard. You know, with, with the single barrel selection process, we wanted to do it justice. I hear sometimes about a, somebody goes to a distillery, such and so distillery, and they, they all have to share from one glass. This is pre-COVID, <laughs> pre-COVID. And we just thought, man, we want, we want to do private barrels right, and uh, as we do everything. I think you've done it, the uh, uh, same as you used to do in your old role, I've still been doing it. I go to a lot of these places, and uh, usually I have a lot of people with me or some internal people, and one day I was very fortunate enough to be by myself. Uh, and I went in there, and Crayola put out all the samples, and she said, oh, and the iPad's over here for some music. So I went over and turned on some music, cranked up the volume, and did the pick by myself, and it was a very, um, very relaxing uh, situation. It's always been one of my favorites that happened last year of just by myself listening to music and really just kind of geeking out on your whiskeys. Uh, so with that, thanks Jay for talking to us about these single barrels and hopefully we'll see you again in the future or when things return to normal, we'll get you guys down in the store a little bit more. Right on, right on. Thank you. Thanks Brad.